Terry, good morning and congratulations on your closing of your recent private placement. What are you going to do with all this money? Going to Vegas? No, no, just joking. We're <laughs> we're we're actually just uh, going to expand our, our drill program from 5,000 meters to 15,000 meters. So, you know, we obviously we did it because we like what we see in the drilling. Um, we'll start to get assays back next week, and and then the public will see why we uh, why we stepped on the gas. Well, speaking of stepping on the gas, for those of you that attended the investor talk this morning, you know we were discussing: is it too late to get in, Terry? Because your stock is gone up 100 percent in the last 60 days you know mining stocks uh will will grow rapidly and 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 this is the the, the great uh, you know uh consideration of our time really is i think resource stocks are going to have a massive run and it's not going to be 20 percent or 50 percent there's going to be 20 and 50 baggers and i think we'll be one of them so i think it's 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 early and the reason why i would say that is now we've got the money so now we're, we've got the money to basically go out and execute the program, which was to add more resources and show you're going to become commercial. The big win in any junior mining play is when you go from being an exploration play to being perceived as a commercial play. So in the nickel sulfide space, our competitors, basic, uh, the commercial ones, and if you look at our, our pitch deck that's on our website, we, we have a listing of them. Uh, it started at 150 million US market cap and go up to 500 million US. I think we're like 12 or 13 million US. So we've got a long way to go because we're going to be very much in that group. And, uh, you know, that'll be a big win for our shareholders. So early days and long ways to go. I want to discuss your drilling. I also want to discuss your technology. But first, let's talk about nickel. We just did a couple of interviews on an the next World War III being over economics and the fight for resources, in particular critical minerals. Let's talk about nickel. Uh, where does nickel fall on this uh, group of critical minerals for demand? Yeah, there's a lot of important aspects to the nickel story. So first you have, what is it underpinning the nickel demand globally? So there's two major themes at, at work. Uh, one is uh, you know basically urbanization. And what's that? People moving from villages into towns, towns into cities. When you make those moves, you basically use more pots and pans, more fridges and stoves, more cars. All that uses stainless steel. Stainless steel is the underpinning of the nickel park market with like about 60% market share, growing at, I think, 6 or 7% compound annual growth rate for a number of years. So that's the monster. Uh, then on the, and the next big wave is electrification. So, uh, you know, nickel is right now, but probably as a market, about 10% for the electric sector, i.e. batteries. And uh, it's expected to grow to 50%. Well, I mean, that's, you know, you have 60% and 50%. Well, that's more than 100%. And there's obviously other uses. So what's happening is, is that supply demand curve for nickel is really going to transform over the next uh, several years. The next couple of years is going to be sort of around even uh, to, uh, but, you know, I think it's sort of two, three years out, it starts to really get to be a supply a demand imbalance and uh, more demand than supply. So that'll tend to probably support higher pricing. So we think the price Point for nickel is going to be, you know, you know ten to the ten to fifteen dollar pound range, which will be very lucrative for nickel miners. Uh, the other aspect about nickel is that you've got uh, laterites and and sulfides. So laterites are generally bigger deposits, uh, but uh, much more complicated uh, deposits to mine, and 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 often located in 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 very environmentally sensitive areas. So. Indonesia, the Philippines have, have some of the biggest deposits in the world, laterite side of things. And the it would be hard to argue if that's a, a clean nickel at the end of the day, given the devastation that has to take place to mine that uh, product and make it make it into nickel. So so there'll be, uh, I believe, in the future, sort of an almost an ESG uh, view as to the nickel, where you're getting it from, in consumer products, uh, especially cars. So it's one thing, you know, I think, that, you know, dirty nickel will find its way into stainless and will almost be unobserved because it's in everything and it's very hard to pinpoint. There's no real, but in, in cars, if Ford has, has made a deal uh, and, and has, it's buying green nickel in somewhere in, in North America and, 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 and GM, as an example, is not, uh, and GM is buying dirty nickel from Indonesia, Ford's going to point that out in a massive program and the consumers are going to know. So that's going to, you know, dampen demand for for GM cars. I'm just using this. I'm just pointing, you know, as an example. I'm not saying that's happened, but I'm just saying this will happen if if the car companies don't buy properly, they will get damaged. And then the second thing is because of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act in U.S. 
there's very specific incentives for North American vehicle manufacturers to get to a certain percentage of North American content in their vehicles. Starts at around 40%, then goes to 90. By the time our mine would be uh, you know, operational, it will be at 90. And you will not be able to have a car uh, acquired in North America and get a full subsidy if you don't have North American nickel. And there's just not enough of it. So this this development of a North American nickel mine, especially one that would be super, you know, a high percentage and very green, uh, you know, we can speak about that later. But you know, it will be highly uh, sought after in our view. So so North American nickel will have, I think, bifurcated pricing. And uh, I'm actually speaking on that topic in uh, in London at the World Mining Congress in about two weeks. High grade nickel. Just if you wouldn't mind giving us an <clears throat> update on the drilling program and talk about the uh, the competitive advantage of your particular nickel. Yeah, so, you know, historically, it, it had a nickel equivalent grade of about 1.5, 1.6% nickel, depending on what nickel price you use. Um, you know, so, you know, that's quite high in, 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 this, uh, in this world today. Um, and, and we think we'll be able to maintain that or enhance that <clears throat> as we go forward. And, and um, some of the other deposits you're seeing you know, in Canada are lower grade, higher volume. Um, so the, the, the challenges are, are on two fronts. Uh, one, the, the, um, your carbon footprint for mining the, the bigger deposits become more of a challenge. Although there's some interesting technology that suggests that maybe nickel tailings of certain deposit types, including ours, could be carbon uh, offsetting, which is sort of cool. We're definitely exploring that. Um, the other thing is, is that from a capital perspective, it takes you know probably a mine like ours to develop it would cost 250 to 300 million US is sort of our, our rule of thumb. Uh, taken from you know looking at Talon Metals PEA, something something similar for, for ours. Um, what's good about our project is we're located across the road literally from a major Hydro Quebec substation. So uh, obviously powering it with hydroelectricity will be you know powered by water. Makes, makes us you know wrapped in the green flag so that'll be fantastic so so I, I think there's some interesting sort of uh you know advantages when you're dealing with high grade nickel you're you're obviously crushing less rock to get the nickel out in our case we'd have a small sort of open pit and then decline so fairly minor footprint so there, there's a, a real uh, benefit from a economic thing and we could probably return irrs we're thinking in the 40, 50% range, and we'll, obviously our PA will speak to that, but that's sort of what Talon was at, and we think would be something similar. So, so those tend to be more attractive to finance and develop versus the laterites, which would cost maybe a billion and plus to advance and um, have lower IRs, like in the, in the low 20s, I think. So, uh, you know, different times, different strokes, and ultimately the nickel demand is so high that possibly all these get built, uh, but we certainly think the, the, uh, the nickel sulfate mines uh, like ours would get you know, advanced first because there'll be higher economic returns. So Terry, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on your series of excellent news and your outstanding performing power nickel stock. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Tracy. Have a great day. Cheers.